true or false? Producers and beat makers are not entitled to any of the writer's share of a song because they don't actually write lyrics. True or false, the only way that a rapper can legally make money off of a beat that they license online is if they get it exclusively. True or false, if you license beats online, you're actually not entitled to any kind of royalties such as performance royalties for radio play or mechanical royalties from streams. This is a serious problem. A lot of us don't know the answers to these questions, and even if we think we know, we're still confused. I love that virtually all of us who make music can go online and sell it, whether we're licensing beats online or uploading our, our songs, albums, mixtapes to platforms such as Spotify. We have the potential to make money for ourselves. We have the potential to, to create amazing careers and reach a lot of people with our music. The problem is, we can do this without understanding the business. A lot of us are licensing beats, a lot of us are selling music, a lot of us are uploading music videos, and we don't understand some of the basics about publishing, we don't understand the contracts that we're signing, we don't understand the, the agreements we're entering in with our collaborators. And you know, I'm a producer, I wanna focus on how we as producers can clear up these misunderstandings for ourselves and for the rappers and singers and songwriters that we work with. So let me break down these BeatStars contracts and expose a bunch of confusion that's going on with them that I'm seeing happen either by customers who are licensed licensing the beats or by us, the producer community, who's licensing the beats yet might not really understand what that means. I don't know what the, the terms and agreements in other beat selling platforms involved just because this is the only one that I use. But what I'm gonna be talking about applies to beat licensing period and it's something that all producers, regardless of what platform you use, even if you don't license beats online, um, can benefit from uh, uh, understanding. And this is, this is for recording artists too who license beats from producers, especially on a non-exclusive basis. Um, first things first, because this is coming up a lot, so when you license a beat online, whether you're the, the person selling the, the, the license or you're the person purchasing the license, um, at least with, with BeatStars, and I'm, I'm fairly sure with Airbit and TrackTrain and so forth, you get this, this copy of an agreement sent to you. So this is my um, unlimited agreement that was sent to me after somebody licensed a beat on an unlimited basis, right? I'm going to talk about unlimited versus exclusive in a second, but right off the bat, this is a hot topic. It has to do with Section 6 ownership, specifically <laughs> Section 6C, which is concerned with ownership on the composition side. Now, I don't want this to become a video where I re-explain what the two copyrights for uh, any given recording are. but. I have videos about this, specifically the ones with CJ from SongTrust. To run it down, briefly, there are two copyrights for every piece of recorded music. One is the master, which is the actual recorded portion in recorded format, a WAV file, so forth. The other part is the composition, which is, they, they call it the underlying composition, um, which is basically the notes, the lyrics, so forth, all the building blocks of the song. that aren't necessarily in recorded form. When you break a song down, it's made up of notes, it's made up of, of lyrics, it's made up of you know measures and so forth. All of that uh, makes up the underlying composition. This is important because each of those copyrights generates royalties. Performance royalties, mechanical royalties on the composition side, especially in, the, in, in today's music industry, are important because of all the streaming platforms and because of YouTube microsyncs and all that. So you want to make sure that, that this part is taken care of so you actually define who owns what percentage, aka share, of a song's composition. And this is tripping people up like crazy and it's causing problems and confusion between producers and rappers and I hate to see that divide uh, widen. So here you see it says, with respect to the publishing rights and ownership of the underlying composition, embodied in the new song, blah, blah, blah. It should be split between them as followed, them being the 
the recording artist and the producer. The person who licenses the beat owns 50% of the writer's share. And me, the producer, I own 50% of the writer's share. Now, wait a minute, hold up. I just made the beat. I didn't write the song. Why do I own half of the writer's share? That doesn't make sense. This is what I hear all the time. So here's where things get confusing. Normally when we think of a, a writer on a song, we think of a songwriter, AKA a rapper or a singer, anyone who writes the lyrics. I'm gonna tell you, and hopefully this clears things up, in the eyes of a performing rights organization, anybody who contributed to the song, or rather anybody who's who owns a piece of the composition is considered a writer. So if you're a producer and, and you made the beat, you're considered a writer. If you're a manager in the room and you're demanding a piece, even if it's 1% of the composition, you're considered a writer. And let me show you what I mean. So here I am in my ASCAP uh, dashboard, right? And I'm pretending that I'm gonna register a new work. So the, the title of this new work is Writers Good Lord, writers share. The remix will feature Ariana Grande. Right here it says writers and publishers. So when you're registering a song, there are only two types of uh, entities involved in an underlying composition, either writers or publishers. Not producers, not rappers, not songwriters, not ghost writers everybody falls under the category of writer right and look down here you can define their role in the song right so for example if i made the beat i'm the composer if i wrote the lyrics i'm the author if i'm the arranger i'm the arranger <laughs> you know what i mean but it's still a writer so a lot of people get frustrated when they read in their contract that a producer owns 50 percent of their writer's share all that means is that the song is being split 50-50 between the person who composed it and the person who wrote the lyrics. That's very fair. Um, and so I don't like seeing this small, it's just one word that's confusing. Just one word and it's causing problems between uh, producers and recording artists. When I was on tour with, with MEC and we talked about the different um, conflicts between the two communities, between uh, the, the producer beat maker community and the singer songwriter rapper community communication and knowledge were pretty much the number one contributing factor to all these conflicts and all this tension shouldn't be like that but that's how it is now here's another point I want to make about these agreements uh, and I'm going to go to my unlimited agreement because this is really important and I think this is something that not even most producers are aware of certainly people who uh, license beats online aren't aware of this. So you've seen the videos, I think um, Curtis King put out a video, I know Cato did, caused all this controversy. They were talking about how they don't want to uh, sell commercial licenses to beats anymore online. People freaked out. Some people freaked out. And I think a, a big part of that is this misunderstanding. And um, I, I think if you walked into a room right now full of, of, of recording artists, even ones who, who license beats online on a regular basis. And you said, hey, every, everyone in here prefers to get your beats exclusively so you have commercial rights so you can sell those songs, right? I think some hands would go up, but that question is flawed. I get rappers hitting me up all the time saying, hey, um, you know, if I get this, this, this unlimited license for, you know, $60, buy one, get one free, or whatever the price is, I'm the only one who owns this beat, right? It's like, no, because when you break that down, that's 60 divided by two, which is 30 a beat. And then if the beat has a hook on it, I'm only getting $15. And if the beat took me three hours to make, that's $5 an hour. That's well below minimum wage. I'm not making beats to work minimum wage. If I wanted to work a job, I'd get a job that pays more than that. Um, the, 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 the license and th and that's not to say I want to cause a conflict I, I don't I'm not offended by that question I, th I think uh, and at one point I was you know producers are sensitive we get offended about stuff like that uh, just being honest the, the point is I, I'm at the point now where I'm just 
aware that there's confusion. And when I explain what the situation is to the recording artists that reach out, they don't get mad at me. You know, they, they just don't necessarily understand the difference between unlimited and exclusive rights. And, and moreover, this is what I want to make very clear. We're looking at the, the defaults here on the BeatStars contract of an unlimited license. You have the right to distribute unlimited copies, to stream unlimited times, right? To give away as many free downloads as you want, to broadcast, to make money off the performances. You know what I mean? So you can sell and commercially exploit the beat, the song that you create using the beat that you license. It's on an unlimited basis. It's non-exclusive, sure. But just because you have non-exclusive rights to, to a track, that doesn't mean that you can't make money from it. That's another thing that causes problems between rappers and producers. A lot of rappers or singers will think, well, if I don't get the exclusive rights, I can't upload this. I can't sell it. I can't get this played on radio and, and make money off the performance royalties. Yes, you can. As I just showed in this, this part of the contract um, under the um, ownership section, right here, it's a 50-50 split. So if the song gets played on radio, if it gets licensed um, for a car commercial for $30,000, that wouldn't that be great? Uh, yeah. That, all that means is that the money's being split among the owners. So the person who licensed the beat, even if they licensed uh, non-exclusively, they're still getting that money. They're still collecting those royalties. They're still collecting that sync fee. And I think we just need to, I think I'm talking to producers now, the, the way to avoid a lot of conflict and a lot of confusion and then a lot of frustration on our part, because we get annoyed because, you know, we don't want to get into these conversations with rappers about whether or not our beats are exclusive and this and that because because sometimes we take ourselves too seriously the best thing for us to do to prevent this is understand our own agreements is to understand our own business if we understand it enough so that we can explain it to potential beat licensors we avoid all we we put their minds at ease we give them peace of mind we're calm we're not taking this personally because we understand that it's just a question about a pretty confusing world and then we're more likely to develop a relationship with that musician and work with them more in the future so knowledge really is power i'm not you know trying to trying to be corny and um in this video in a cliche but i guess that's exactly what i'm doing so uh much continued knowledge to all of you appreciate you watching peace